Hey, yeah, what's up? Thomas Gold here. Hi, everybody. And we're back in the studio, and I will show you how I did the drop in my track Remember. And because you guys were asking how I mix together my sounds and how um, I make them sound like fat and dry and still punchy without losing too much of the energy of the track, and I think the basic thing is that you just keep every single track, every single instrument of the track as clean as possible. Um, cut out frequencies if you don't need them, compress wherever possible, limit your tracks and just, um, yeah, you should pick the right sounds because if the sound is not right you, you're never gonna fix it with EQs or other stuff. So it's a little bit of trial and error and it may, it may take a while but at the end um, it really makes sense and it makes all the mix down and, and the, the final mastering way easier. If you listen to this... If you we'll remember. Um, you can hear a kick, a bass and a little bit of percussion and then of course the, all the trumpet and brass sounds and they're combined with some synthesizer sounds. And uh, what you can see if you open up um, like an analyzer, you can uh, use whatever you want, for example the Logic one here. You see, you can see that there's not much going on here in the low frequency uh, range. And a lot in the middle and the high end is already like um, rolling off a little bit. Um, but it's still very strong in, in the mix and um, it adds perfectly, perfectly to the low end section which is the kick drum and uh, the bass sound and which sounds like this I'm sorry for the crackling, it's my processor <laughs> um, and you saw that um, it's, it's, it's all very low end driven And when I put this together with the with the brass section, it's all clean and clear, and it's not clashing, and it, it, it's it's not sounding like too muddy or too full. And then I have a couple of things going on here: all the percussion sounds and the toms, which is, um, for example, this, the marching drum which you can see is very thin in the frequency spectrum and um, also have the other ones. So I used a lot of EQ just to um, narrow the frequency range of the percussion and then I have the high stuff and a shaker And you see it's all very um, very much uh, pretty much in the, in, the, in the higher range of the frequency, frequency spectrum and when you play it all together you can see that it all actually um, works well together. And for example when I add the claps you see there's no frequencies below 250 Hertz and how I achieve this um, is just EQing, like this one here, I'm cutting all the stuff here and I'm even cutting frequencies in the higher range and I'm cutting the, the top end just to make the clap um, clean because without it takes a lot of um, energy in the mix already and that's why I'm using um, the EQ for that and I'm also adding another EQ because you can never have enough cues. Um, again, cutting out all the low end, just to make sure there's nothing left in this frequency range. Top end again. And then I'm compressing the claps a little bit to bring out the room. You see, it's, it's, it's very subtle, but it's there. There is some compression. And um, what else? I'm, for example, I'm having a room plug in on it, which, which makes it sit more in the mix, it brings it back um, 
adds more dimension to the whole thing. And sometimes when you have a lot of elements going on, it's good to, to not only spread them in the stereo field, but also in the depth of the, of the, of the, of the sound field. Like uh, imagine you have a stage and you, in the front row you have the violins or whatever, or the singer, and you have the drummers in the back and, and the, the celli and the basses and the stuff. And it's like a, a three-dimensional setup. And you can do this with um, delay and panning and also with um, uh, um, adding reverb to a sound. And that's what I did with the clap. So in the mix, you can really hear the difference. It moves a little bit away from you and it just sits in the mix. So that's actually what I'm doing. And um, yeah, then it's all about um, compressing all the sounds and, and, and as I said, like limiting them. And for the bass sound, of course, what I'm doing is the side chaining or the actually the simulated side chain. It's the LFO tool. This plugin here um, does what a side chain normally does, but you don't need to have a trigger. You can really um, get more space for the kick. Take this away. So you you just get rid of the attack phase of, this, of uh, on, on 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 every. Um, beat of the bar. Yeah, and at the end, um, you just have to make sure at the end that everything fits together. And um, um, you can layer a lot of sounds in a mix, but just make sure that every single sound has its own place in the mix. That's basically um, what I'm doing, and um, I hope you got some ideas about that. Take care, see you guys very soon, bye.